Mods have always been the breathing lungs of the Mountain Blade franchise. Even all the way back in the original game of 2008, there was a thriving and healthy modding scene. This only grew when Warband came along, with some of the biggest and most game-changing updates that most titles can only dream of. Full Invasion 2, bringing massive scale horde modes to the multiplayer. Floris expanded, taking Warband single player and, well, expanding it. Even to great overhauls in the form of things like Clash of Kings at the height of Game of Thrones' popularity, replicating it across the whole of Caradia. So, in 2020, when we finally got early access to Tailworld's long-awaited sequel, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, it was only a matter of time before that same vast modern community of developers and designers decided to step up. And my god, step up they did. This video is sponsored by Prosperous Universe. Explore the wide open spaces in this massively multiplayer economy sandbox simulation. A realistic sci-fi setting played through a customizable, expertly crafted user interface straight from your web browser. You are the CEO of your own spacefaring company. Exploring the galaxies, forging alliances, producing, trading, finding the best transport and profiting for your business. The game has such a cool unique take on the modern sci Fi economy simulator. I mean, if you like stats, I can't lie, you're gonna be in heaven here. And the best part, it's all constant. There is only one universe, one economy. All players compete and cooperate in the same ever expanding universe. Every resource and commodity can and must be provided by real people and real players. Every price is determined by supply and demand on a real time exchanges 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So if you're not in it, you're missing out now and you want to know something amazing it can be played completely for free so join the link below to get started today Going back to the start, we need to look earlier, even before the release of Bannerlord's Early Access, to find where this modding scene actually started. It was always going to be a given that modding tools would eventually be given to the players, but just quite how much control would we get? We weren't really sure, yet at E3 in 2016 we were given a fantastic bit of Siege gameplay, along with a little bit of info about what we can expect from these modding tools. First of all, it would all be in C Sharp, and modders would have full access to nearly everything that the developer themselves would have when creating the game. This meant being able to completely add or remove textures, sound design, create entirely custom maps, troops, artwork, pretty much everything apart from actually editing the engine itself. You know, kind of just to stop people just making a new game from Bannerlord's proprietary engine. Later on though, Tailworld showed us the map editor that people would be able to use during Bannerlord's early access. But just quite how in depth it was going to be, I'm not even sure I realised. But what a reveal stream this was, showing all the complexities about planning and building castles, how you can sort spawning of troops and assets, and even how to completely change and modify those assets to something completely different. Then in January of 2020, we actually got a beta. Well, it kind of all started at Gamescom that year. Tailwords were letting attendees play the game and record it with the footage that they could then use and release. Along with this, however, they were giving out keys to people that were at Gamescom. Thankfully, a kind subscriber attended, got a key, and sent it over to me. Yet even though it was just a beta, mods started to appear and then we got Bannerlord's first true modification. The mod itself was custom battles. Yeah, it was that basic at that time. You see, the beta that we were given was multiplayer only, testing out a few maps and game modes for the game, but it was all online. So someone decided, no, 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 I'm not having that. They took some of the files and enabled people to go offline and test out all the troops that the game had to offer at the time. And my God, looking back at it now, it's insane to see how basic this first version of the battle test mod was but that was all we had. And at the time, I remember being so excited just to be able to play this new game. But this wasn't the end for the battle test mod. Then they soon brought out a new version of it in early February, adding in some custom maps, bringing in morale for troops. And what's more, they gave us a look at sieges with siege weaponry. And this was before that you could even play sieges in multiplayer. It was kind of mad. I remember even at the time being blown away with how modders had taken a game that isn't even in early access yet with no actual modding tools and still being able to unlock these features features that we were never actually supposed to play early. Yet in some ways it was the best free promotion that Tailwoods ever got for that game, just months before release. So there we were. March 28th, 2020, that fateful day. The excitement was off the charts. Bannerlord had been pushed forward two days from its initial release of March 30th, so Tailwoods knew they had a banger on their hands. And my god, 
were they right? I mean, I knew the game would be big, but to what level? I don't think even I expected. And this was when we started to get more mods. Now, bear in mind, still no modding tools were out at this point. Everything was just created from the brilliant minds of the community without any official developer help. The voice command was one of the first to come. Being able to command your troops on the battlefield and in sieges with nothing but your vocal cords. It was basic, but kind of cool at the same time. And it worked. What's more, because it used Windows voice recognition software, the more you used it, the better it got at detecting your voice and carrying out commands on behalf of you. And it was a real first step into making you feel like a real badass commander in your campaigns. Then on the 12th of April, we got the decapitation mod for Bannerlord, giving players the opportunity to swing your axe, ending in a bloody death for anyone that got in the way. Then modders got ambitious. Full army and troop reskins started to enter the fray, beginning with the Spartan and Greek troop overhauls. Your Naked warriors take to the battlefield, slaying troops left, right, and center, making you feel like Leonidas leading the 300 to their glory. The YouTube channel and modder Best Mods started releasing footage of their custom maps before even the map maker from Tailwoods had released, especially the Hot Gates one, which, speaking to the creator at the time, they said that they had to change Banlord's files to add and move terrain, then log into the game, see if it worked, and then log back out to alter the values. It must have taken ages. But once again, it worked, and especially with the Greek and Spartan troop tree overhauls, it really fit together. Then some time passed. We got some more fantastic skins and overhauls, yet modding then started to step up. In the winter of 2020, we got muskets, our first look and showcase in the up and coming Napoleonic Wars mod, Sword and Musket, hoping to soon follow up to the much beloved NW DLC that was in Mountain Blade Warband. Then we got Eagle Rising entering the scene. At the time, it was a very basic Roman reskin for some troops, but as we know now, it's fledged into one of the most complex and brilliant mods in the game in total. And let's not forget Caradia Awakens, one of the the most ambitious mods that we would ever get, bringing in anything from high fantasy and magic to gritty ground gunpowder weaponry and historical nations. Then finally, we got our first real look at the long-awaited co-op mod, a mode that everybody hopes Tailwoods would add themselves, but obviously ended up being a bit too much, especially for the development time frame. So modders took it upon themselves to see what they could do, and the first test footage was bare bones, but it actually showed two people in two separate parties exploring Karadia together. Yet this wasn't the only campaign multiplayer mods that started to hype up. We got Bannerlord Online. It actually released a full cooperative MMO style to the single player, almost coming out of nowhere. I remember on the first night, seeing a server with a thousand people, all farming, forming parties and fighting bandits together, being absolutely blown away. Mind you, we still don't have private servers in the base game. So seeing that someone was able to create servers with thousands of people on was thought to be impossible. And since then, that Bannerlord Online mod has gone from strength to strength, recently adding in PvP and clans to create and form kingdoms, I really should probably look at that one again. And from that point forward, the Bannerlord modding scene was all out warfare. Every mod trying to one up the other one, see who had the most game changing modification. Every day something different would be teased or released, from Star Wars Separatist Crisis releasing new gameplay, to someone actually fixing the sieges within the base game itself over a year and a half after its release, just because they were annoyed that Tailworlds hadn't done it yet. And it goes on on and on. More and more mods are releasing every day now and the future's looking even more exciting. I mean, we've recently had Seven Kingdoms mod and the Old Realms. They're doing massive things for these big overhauls. Yet in the next few months and years, there's so much coming on its way. I mean, multiplayer mods haven't really started production yet, just due to the lack of private servers and files because Tailwoods haven't released them. But even then, as I mentioned, Separatist Crisis is coming. It's going to be massive. We've got Kingdoms of Arda taking us into a complete overhaul of Lord of the Rings. And there's way more than that that I haven't even mentioned yet. But what has been your favorite mod so far in Battlelords Evolution? What are you most excited for and what did I miss in this video? Make sure you leave a comment down below. But leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one.